scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. I think it was on Sunday I was talking to my people and I was helping them to see and appreciate the extent of the rebellion and the stubbornness of Satan that for millions of millions of years at least as we know maybe more from the time he was casted from heaven satan is still fighting god till today what determination that he will not give up satan comes to you and talks to you about god as if he does not you can imagine as if he does not factor his defeat in the discussion satan never talks to you as if he's defeated I hope you will laugh. Let me tell you what I'm about to tell you. Someone came and met me. I think I was praying for people after service one time. And a young boy came, just stood before me. And I saw something that looked like the poster of an election. And I looked at him and he came with conviction. And I opened it. And I wanted to run away. He was coming out for president of Nigeria. Having shouted and thought that all things were possible. I looked at this, my dear brother, and I didn't know how, how, what, what angle do I become diplomatic? Do I go directly? I looked at this boy and you will know, you will see the gaps in knowledge, the decades of learning this guy would need to. Yes, president. I don't know what party. I'm not sure there was a party yet. In all fairness, in all fairness, I'm not, if I'm joking, I'll tell you I'm joking. He stood at the line for prayer. Said he came to receive it. I, I told him, I said, look, um, my, my dear brother, let me tell you this. Um, God walks in seasons, number one, and life is in levels. The gentleman did not agree. You see that? And I told him, I said, do you know what it means to be the president of any nation? And then the president of Nigeria. He was absolutely convinced. Absolutely. It would have been better if he said maybe he had a dream or prophecy. He just came and just believed that he wants to change Nigeria. He's never been class rep. He's never been um, maybe... Uh, uh, Not even counselor, leader of some whatever it is. You think God hates us that much as a nation? I know we've sinned against God as a nation, but oh, come on, please. There's still a remnant that... This gentleman was almost making trouble. I just said, kneel down. Just laid hands on him and said, please, just, just carry your trouble and go. I'm not ready... <laughs> So imagine, do you know, with that kind of determination, there is nothing you would tell that guy. That's the kind of determination Satan has over your destiny. That as unwise as it looks, Satan still believes in his agenda. That's, what, that's the point I'm trying, to, I'm trying to pass across. You would think Satan should be so afraid because of your last testimony and not come again. Satan... You watch him. The Bible says he left Jesus for a season. 
you testified as a triumph of light over darkness if i were satan i would give up the way the miracle happened he stopped the first child and you gave birth to twins and you think satan will fold his arms he will rest and come back again this is the kind of adversary we have if you do not know who satan is and his level of determination you will take him for granted to your peril I'm showing you the necessity for the warfare and the intercessory dimension of prayer. Satan will kill anything he finds to kill. You know, Satan does not have an agenda of himself. He studies what God wants and creates an agenda out of it. It's not like he has a preset. No, 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 no. He looks at your life. He does not have any personal bias towards you. He just wants to know what God is doing. And he hears that God wants to lift you. That in this year, God is taking Roger to another dimension. He says, fine. Now we have an assignment. His assignment is a subset of whatever God is saying. Anytime God is speaking, don't you ever think you are the only one hearing. Satan is a very intelligent listener. When he came to Adam, he said, what did God say? I don't tell me what. I just want to know what God said. Because my assignment is tied to what he said are we learning so the moment he said this charge i give unto you my son timothy that you wore a good warfare with the prophecy god had spoken to you i'm lifting you this year and i'm bringing honor and glory to your life don't just say amen and stop you must engage you go to the place of prayer and ward off all of those things first peter chapter 5 and verse 8 have a few more minutes first peter 5 and verse 8 let me show you a very powerful scripture it says be sober first peter 5 and verse 8 be sober it says be vigilant what does it mean to be vigilant to be vigilant means to be sensitive to not be careless to be discerning he says because your adversary not your boss not the one fighting you those are puppets the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour jesus gave us power and authority over satan there are families who continue to watch the devil wreck them and shred them into pieces and they keep getting depressed. There are lives, you think the devil wants you to continually be anointed in ever increasing dimensions. He's seen the havoc that the anointing in your life has done so far to the kingdom of darkness. Will he grant you access to intelligence and systems and structures that can multiply the anointing? He will fight it tooth and nail. Satan knows what you did with the last 10 million God gave you. He knows how the house of God benefited. You think he will sit down and just allow doors to be open anyhow. You don't know Satan. He's every other thing but lazy and foolish. Two things you cannot credit to Satan. He's not lazy and he's not foolish. Apostle, why is it that other people who are not Christians, they don't even pray and they move forward? There is nothing that is pro-kingdom in their agenda. So Satan has no concern about fighting them satan attacks but in truth he has a protocol listen many of you watch football if you are playing say a semi-final or a finals and you are supposed to weaken that team your your target will be the the strongest of the, the key players they call them is that true if you can bring one or two out i think you've done a good job as far as making a contribution to the defeat of that team that's what satan is doing so the fact that satan is not letting you rest should tell you the role you play in god's agenda why is it that out of 10 people in your family he seems to have isolated you i tell you why because in his mind you are equal to the strength of the 10 people rather than seeking to destroy the 10 people one by one why is satan focusing on your church why is satan focusing on you as a man of god you are worth to him in his thinking. You are worth to him more than 5,000 preachers. 
fighting you is most profitable to him than fighting is a way of conserving energy when he comes to you it should be a consolation that you are really valuable in god's agenda is god speaking now satan leave my family alone that's not it he's found out that there is something in that family you are not aware of that is pro kingdom satan why are you fighting my marriage why are you fighting my fruitfulness why are you fighting this satan does not fight anything for itself he looks beyond that thing and sees what it will achieve so hannah if samuel is coming out of you get ready to be barren it's not about your womb it's about samuel who else will anoint saul who else will anoint david elizabeth if john is coming out of you who will ordain jesus who will save the world you are on my list joseph if your rising will bring preservation to god's people so that they become god's covenant people the people from whom the messiah will come then get ready for trouble can i tell you this this is an information i'm giving you as we prepare to pray i can tell you this by revelation and i can tell you this from scripture satan attacks but he does not attack anyhow he attacks based on on how much point that attack will score as far as his advancement is concerned so he can isolate preachers he can isolate businessmen if you plan to be serious with god listen to this message if you don't plan to be serious with god that's all right but if you plan to be serious with god i want you to know that not everybody is willing to be serious with god the moment you declare to be serious with god you have drawn the line with satan will he come yes uninvited yes is called a thief are thieves invited all you need to do is to be successful build a house your success and your results is the invitation but we have a god in heaven now thanks be to god who causes us how long always now thanks be to god preacher now thanks be to god businessman now thanks be to god that in spite of the schemings of darkness there is already a way of escape someone should rejoice that there is a way of escape a way of escape in prayer i can engage by the power of prayer and subdue everything that looks like a manifestation of darkness this morning we are going to take five minutes to engage i know that we have spoken about these four points but i am concerned about the fourth because this is where many of us are in and in the next five minutes i like us to take some time to pray can i tell you there are certain gates you need to bring down this morning you need to tell yourself enough is enough the bible says i daniel understood by books he knew when his season had come to an end when seasons come to an end do not let satan prolong it thus far have you come he said no father shall you go it's time to release the gates of ministry to release the gates of can i tell you creation is waiting for that command if you know how to pray you will triumph and prevail over situations and circumstances i am a product of prayer i know what prayer has done in my life and i know what it continues to do no matter how weak a man is let that man pray no matter how big the situation is let that man pray luke 18 and verse 1 he spake a parable to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint he said there was a king a judge an unjust judge that that man did not fear god and he did not regard men and there was a weak
helpless widow who came to him and said avenge me my adversary and the bible says for a long time he would not hear her but for her importunity her persistence and staying power and jesus says that if this woman she had no system of physical defense but she knew how to pray the man said even though i do not fear god and i do not regard men yet this woman by her continual disturbance she can weary me if you can weary men you can weary closed doors you can weary closed seasons and open them up are we learning please in the next five minutes there's no prayer point you are praying in the spirit and you are engaging with understanding and then if one or two prayer points come from it i'll communicate it but i'm sure that if 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 i'm allowed you can just walk around within your limited space but i want you to pray seriously the next five minutes you are praying this is warfare and intercession lift your voice and begin to pray you're praying this is for your destiny this is for your ministry is someone praying hold on to the horns of the altar and pray it's time to shift climates and seasons my life must experience a personal revival it's time for that which is asleep to be awakened in me pray you who is following in your home following in your office make sure you are connecting and praying right where you are go ahead and pray the hindrances that have come as a result of controlling powers over my life and over my destiny i challenge you by the god of heaven in the name of Jesus now please listen hallelujah when it has to do with prophetic prayer of warfare and intercession there are rules of engagement there are pre three principal ways from scripture that satan affects and even inflicts believers never forget these three number one and the highest platform for his invitation into the life of the believer is called the power of covenants number two is ignorance number three is disobedience these are the only as complicated as satan looks if he ever finds access to any life and any destiny it must be one or more of these three platforms and the way you close those doors and you deal with it differ covenants you when satan is having access to a believer a church a business an individual based on covenants you don't cast him away it takes the ministry of the blood you see that now the blood has an assignment to nullify covenants on legal basis because the blood has a voice so there are rules of engagement you've heard me say it as powerful as god is he could not cast sin out of man to say man i am god and i am creator the earth is mine i cast sin i declare you righteous <laughs> the blood had to precede that speaking the bible says blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance 
that spoke against us, he nailed it to his cross. I think it was Isaiah 49 that says, Shall the prey be taken? The captive of the mighty and the prey from the terrible. He said, Thus said the Lord, even the lawful. There is a kind of captivity that is called lawful captivity. And the Bible is saying, even under that condition, there is still a provision in the economy of God where an individual can be free. Don't you think this is not an issue? There are many ignorant believers who do not know that covenants are a system of authorization. Listen, if I am a thief and I step into this assembly to pick this, if I hear any sound, what do I do? I run away because I am a thief. But let's say I meet, God forbid, but let's say I meet any of the ushers or somebody who is a worker in this church and he sells this for me and I pay him and I come to pick it. If I hear you coming, will I run away? Why? Because I paid for it. You are not going to tell me go away. You will have to bring a judge. There has to be a system of appeasal. That's what Jesus came to do. Hmm. There are spirits that are not casted away. This kind you overcome them by the blood of the lamb. Believe me. This is, this is why many believers just pray all kinds of sincere and well-meaning prayer that does not produce power in the spirit. Because there are rules of engagement. I speak the blood. I plead the blood. Eternal saving blood. I don't have to cry. For you have paid the price. The blood. There are many demons were minding their business and many parents and individuals went and invited them and said, I need assistance. And they said, we don't just give assistance. They said, I know. I'm desperate. Fine. And later on, you just wave them off. You see, let me tell you this. I'm not glorifying Satan. When the missionaries came to Nigeria, listen carefully, they brought the evangelical dimension of the gospel. But many of them did not have the spiritual intelligence to understand the modus operandi of the kingdom. They did not open us up to the dynamics of victory in its entirety. Many of them came and they did not even know why they died. They just came to villages and brought the gospel and died. Some went back and now they did their best. We must give them that honor. Except that personal and territorial revival. Let me challenge you. Go and study on the the revival in Fiji Island. If you can go, I'm sure it should be on YouTube. You go and read about the documentary. They, they killed and massacred some missionaries who came to preach. And before one of the missionaries died, I think in anger or sadness, he made a pronouncement over the entire Fiji Island. They laughed it over, shrugged it over and swept it under the carpet. Many years later, the fish refused to produce from the river they would plant is there's a documentary crops refused to grow and the people were suffering and then it got to a point where some prayer warriors said no we can't be here they began to pray you see when you don't know what to do pray it is in prayer that what to do comes they began to pray and a prophetic word came that there were legal speakings over that place do you know these people prayed and some other people while they were praying said, don't mind these people, nothing will happen. To their shock, that land remained barren. Until a few people came with spiritual intelligence. Fortunately, they could access the grandchildren of those missionaries that were murdered. And when that happened, they invited them over. It was, it was a national ceremony where they apologized to them. And they prayed and the people released blessings on the land. It was not more than 24 hours. Go and find the documentary. Fish from nowhere, different species that were missing. Just came out from the river. This earth is mysterious. Oh, and there are rules of engagement. Can I tell you? Covenants are powerful. Covenants are not emotional. No. 
it is the reason why anything God takes serious in your life, he creates a covenant around it. Marriage, your salvation, when God wants to take anything serious, he does not trust the vacillations of emotions. If God has not brought a covenant to that thing, you will not get his best. Everything that God takes serious, he connects to covenant. And then disobedience. Having the readiness to judge all disobedience if your own obedience is complete. And then ignorance. Ephesians 4.18 having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Why am I giving you these cues? Because we are going to pray. There are some of us who in our prayer right now, you need to plead the blood. That I will never have a repetition of what happened to my father and what happened to my mother. I have been called out of every tribe and every tongue. And in the name of Jesus, the legal binding, the speakings, the ill speakings connected to my territory, connected to my bloodline. What then is the advantage of my encounter with the blood? You can, you can engage it just because you are born again does not automatically, you have to engage it with understanding. Are you ready to pray now? Please lift your voice in one minute and begin to pray. The blood is our, our basis for access. Plead the blood upon your life, your finances, your family. That everything that gives the devil legal access over my health, over my life, over my joy, over my peace, over my church, over my spiritual life. I stand by the blood of the eternal covenant and I decree and I declare that in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, that blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel, that blood that advocates my release, that blood that advocates my freedom. Satan, the Lord rebuke you the blood is against you satan the lord rebuke you failure the lord rebuke you setbacks the lord rebuke you someone pray the lord rebuke you the lord rebuke you the Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. Don't be tired of praying. The flesh may be weak, but the spirit is willing. It's been waiting for this chance so that a door be opened over you once and for all. Are you praying? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We are still praying. 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 9. 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 9. There are many of us there are doors that have been opened the truth is when you go to god and say open the door he will tell you i've opened it but another spirit has stood in the place of that door to close it and stop you from passing a great door an effectual is opened unto me he said but there are many so adversaries don't just follow men they follow doors they stand at the corridors of doors they know that anyone who enters this door is going to the next season. Can I tell you this? Look at me, please. Doors connect rooms to rooms. Doors midwife seasons. Between one season and another is a door. Between your kitchen and your living room is a door. 
So you, doors are systems of transition. When that door is closed, you will remain in the same season for a long time. Someone is ready to break that door open. Are you ready to pray now? You are going to pray that every door, doors of ministry, doors of influence, doors of power, doors of higher levels of grace, you are going to engage by the power of the Spirit. Those doors must be open right now. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray like a priest. Someone is praying. Doors be open in the name of Jesus. Every spirit assigned by the devil to stand at the corridor of one season connecting another in my life. I come against you. I engage by the blood of the Lamb. I engage by the power of the word in the name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead and swing those doors open. Go ahead and swing those doors open. We are praying. Your life must carry a testimony of the goodness and the mercy and the grace of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. This next prayer point, please listen. If you are a man of God, if you are in business, if you are a leader, anything you are doing that demands influence, please pay attention to this next prayer point. Can I tell you this? One of the greatest areas of attack of Satan over believers is their influence. What is your influence? Your capacity to compel men to buy into your ideologies. The kingdom advances based on evangelism and influence. Not evangelism alone. Satan fights the influence of men. What does it mean to fight your influence? To fight your relevance? To fight your voice? So that your voice cannot speak. Are we together? Two scriptures. Are you tired? Be patient too. We are going to pray this morning. Are we together? Hmm. Zechariah chapter 1 from verse 18 I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that set themselves against me round about I lay me down and I slept help that woman under the anointing the power of God is coming on someone at the back for the Lord sustained me but thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me, my glory, the lift up. Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 18. God is opening someone's eyes right now. Hallelujah. Please, there are two people, just two people. I'm, I just saw light from here, from the stage. The power of God just coming on two people and I'm seeing a circle just come to an end please help them two people I just saw that light I don't know where they are just just help them right now the power of God that light the Lord is saying that there is a season by this prayer as simple as it is the Lord is bringing an end to that season an end to that season Zechariah 1 and verse 18 please goodness then lifted I up my eyes and saw, and I beheld four horns. How many? Nineteen. And he said, and the angel said unto me, What be these? And he answered, I said unto the angel, What be these? And he answered, These are the horns which have scattered my praise, my covenant, and my peace. Three things these horns fight my praise my covenant and my peace verse 20 and the lord showed me four carpenters 21 
now he gives perspective to what I saw. Let's go to verse 21. I said, what come these to do? The horns now. And he said, these are the horns which have scattered Judah. Read with me. So that, verse 21, keep 21. So that no man did lift up. Will you see the horns physically? You will just know you are trying to rise. It's like there is a peg over your influence. Many years ago in Zaria, when I was in Zaria, the Lord, because it's a highly Islamic place, you know that, and you know the all kinds of spirits and rituals happen daily, the Lord gave me an instruction, a prophetic instruction. Now, this is not a doctrine. This I'm just sharing my experience. From a, a very far, I don't know what distance I would, I would, you know, place here in Abuja, but the Lord asked me from that place to start walking and prophesying over the entire land. Let me tell you, I walked a distance that would be at least 45 minutes to an hour. Not exercise, so praying and commanding the forces, that northern horn that would not stop the purposes of God to rise, to bring it down. Can I tell you, those horns can go down if they meet the right voice that speaks to them. There are controlling powers in every region. You can be in a city and yet spiritually you are out of that city because the gates have not been opened. Believe me when I tell you this. You can have a business within a city and wonder why the doors are not opened. The door to your influence. Why does Satan fight influence? I will tell you because he knows that when your voice truly becomes a voice it will be easy for God to transform people in a moment to your voice is that true you believe that Satan would have wanted this conference to hold look at the lives that have been changed because of one man's obedience through this conference Satan is a determined fighter that's why you can see you're a businessman but you are fighting in the spirit like a preacher because you are the only one calling yourself a businessman. Satan is not calling you a businessman. You are as much a threat as an evangelist to him. He does not care what you do. The moment he finds out that there is potential to glorify Jesus, you are a threat. Acts chapter 12. Please be patient while praying. It takes stamina to pray. Acts chapter 12. Let's begin our reading from verse 1. Acts chapter 12. Now about that time, please look up. Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. Verse 2 now. The Bible says he killed James. You see the killer again. That thief that comes to steal. He killed James the brother of John with the sword. Verse 3. The Bible says, and because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further. Look at this. Every time you allow darkness to continue, it proceeds further. I can tell you the first thing Satan does in your life is not all he intends to do. He will test you and watch your reaction. When you quietly, passively explain it away, he proceeds further. He started by bringing headache. He says it's just a slight headache. Now you are feeling a pain and you are hearing in your ears cancer. If you don't attack it, he will proceed father satan never gives his best shot he would test and see if you keep quiet and you do not attack he will proceed further please keep that scripture he proceeded further to take peter also so he started with your finances you kept quiet now he's peeling over into your marriage because you have given him room the bible says they were the days of unleavened bread verse three verse four now and the Bible says, and when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him. Can you imagine this level of bondage? All to shut his voice. I hope, do you know why Satan was attacking these people? They were the three people who went with Jesus to the Mount of Transfiguration. Satan was selecting them intelligently to kill them. They are the threefold cord that make the apostolic formation. Peter, James, and John. Now they had killed James. He caught Peter now. 
See what happened to John. Intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Verse 5. Hallelujah. Read with me. It says, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without season of the church unto God for him. What happened? Verse 6. When Herod would have brought him forth the same night, that's how effective prayer can be. Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains and the keepers before the door of the prison. Watch what prayer does. Behold, an angel of the Lord in response to prayer. Could it be that they neglected something to have killed James? Because the same angels that came here showed that they were readily available. Could it be that there was something they neglected that James paid the price for? Now they were wiser and said, we will not let this happen again. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying, arise up quickly. And the chains fell off from his hands. Follow with discernment now. And the Bible says, verse 8, the angel said unto him, guard thyself and bind on thy sandals. And he did so. And he said unto him, cast thy garment about thee and follow me. Verse 9. And he went out and followed him and wist not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he was, he saw a vision. Verse 10. Now, this is where I want you to get the revelation of influence. When they were past the first and second gate, there were three gates that Peter needed to pass to go out back to the city. When Satan withdrew him from the city, he used three gates to lock him. The first gate opened. The second gate opened. Then the Bible says they came to the iron gate that leaded to where? There is a gate that leads to the city. The city is the place of visibility. is the place of influence. And he said there is a gate that if it does not happen, open. The city will never know you are there. The iron gate that leads to the city. The Bible says it opened of its own accord. Can I tell you? I know you are doing business. I know you are doing ministry. I know you are doing what you are doing. But has that third gate been opened? You may not be in the prison. But you may not also be in the city. The city is the place of visibility. It's where God makes news with you. The next prayer point is that we're going to smash that gate that opens to the city. The gate that controls visibility and influence. Hear me. There are many of us in this city who have products and services that should be patronized at an institutional level. And yet because of that, that gate does not seem to be open and the city cannot receive you. One time I, I spoke with a gentleman, an architect, and sincerely I stand before God to tell you when I saw what this gentleman was, you know, what he was doing, I thought to myself, I said, this man should not even be in Nigeria. What level of intelligence? Have you applied anything? He said, yes. When gifted people suffer like they are not gifted, the iron gate has shut them. Because according to the law of value, your visibility should make room for you. It should bring you before great men. If the gate is open, Joseph, you may have the ability to interpret dreams and prefer solution, but there is an iron gate that stops you. Midwife in Pharaoh, the palace, your place of honor, and where you are is that gate. Is someone ready to pray? In the name of Jesus, lift your voice and pray. And decree by the power of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. Someone pray. The iron gate over your ministry. The iron gate over your business, your family, your endeavor. That gate that fights your influence and your visibility. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. In the name of Jesus command that gates to be open not just for you let it be open so your children can pass he said who is this king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle lift up your heads oh ye gates 
be ye lifted ancient doors. Pray. Shanega de Becatokos Kotobakata. Rakata Bakatos Kotepekatos. Gates of influence. Efata be open. Gates of wealth. Efata be open. Gates of relevance for the kingdom and for the sake of his majesty. Be open. Someone decree. Someone decree. Don't be silent. In the name of Jesus. Last prayer point. <laughs> Please look up. How do you know the gate has opened? Mark chapter 1. How do you know the gates of visibility has opened for you? Mark chapter 1. Please let me encourage you. Whoever did not come to church this morning, please give them this teaching. Buy it and go and give them. Buy the CDs and use it as a blessing and tell them, look, I know you will get blessed in other sessions, but something happened this morning that I want you to be part of. Mark chapter 1, let's start from verse 34. How do I know that the gates of influence and visibility has been opened unto me? And he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. Yes, please. And the Bible says, and in the morning, rising a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place there to pray. Now, 36 and 37 gives you the secret this is the litmus test you know that the gates have been opened the bible says and simon and they that were with him did what followed after when you are walking alone that gate is not yet open when they begin to see that light rise from you and the bible says 37 read 37 and when they had found him what did they say they said unto him all men let me explain what all men means all men does not just mean many men mm -mm. the bible did not say many men do you know what all men means all men means all systems all structures all works of life you can have poor men look for you based on the value you provide you can have wealthy men look for you based on the value you provide. You can have your tribesmen look for you. Is that true? You can have children look for you. You can have elders look for you. You can have diplomats look for you. But when that gate is truly open, all men means professionals, the poor, the rich, the old, the young, governments, gatekeepers. This is how you know that the gate has been opened. Can I tell you this? There are many of us, what you do would have found greater visibility if certain men had come to you. Are we together? Can we still add one more prayer? Are you tired? Now you know what it means when the gates are open. Look at the kind of people who have come to you seeking for you. It says even the king shall entreat your favor, all men your business, your life, who has come to glean of the wisdom of the spirit from your life? All men. Because there is a shofar in the realm of the spirit. When Gideon sounded that shofar, 30,000 people, don't ask where they came from. They came to hear the wisdom of God upon his life. Can I tell you, when this gate is open, the presidents of nations can come to you and say, listen, I have discerned that the counsel of God is upon you and I will pay whatever price it takes to hear God speak through you. Is someone ready to pray? I'd like you to declare and call for the nations, call for the classes of people that must be captured in your destiny in this season. To make for your advancement and to make for your revival lift your voice and pray all men all men seek for thee all men politicians 
all men gatekeepers all men spiritual people all men those in need for salvation all men those in need for transformation all men gifted people all men burden bearers all men divine connectors all men men of influence and captains of industry because this gate is now open i command the ministry of all men all men in the name of jesus christ hallelujah let me give us one more prayer point when it was time for jesus to step into jerusalem the Bible says he was in need of a donkey. He did not have that donkey, but he needed the donkey. And he said, go to a place where the roads divide. He said, you will find a colt. It is there, but there is a condition. It is tied. Parakatusia. The money that will make the prophecy God said about me not look like a lie is there. But it is time. The destiny helper who has been sent by God to hold my hands in this season so that I be not discouraged. The person is there. Tired. Can I tell you, when something is not there and when it is there and tied, is the same result you will get. And he said that cult was designed I have never seen an adult colt that no man had ridden on. What was the owner doing with it then? That means a hand was keeping it specially. That colt became an adult colt and no man had ridden on it. He said, when you get there, don't just tell it to come. It wanted to come all the while, but it was he said, I desire to come to you again, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. And he said, when lose it, whilst you are losing it, chances are excellent that somebody will confront you. When they ask you, tell them the master, Barako Siata. We're about to call some things in our lives now. And if the devil says, why? Your answer is the master. We're in the season right now why should this new level of anointing come to my life the master had need of it why should my child come in this season the master had need of it why should i acquire my own property in this season the master had need of it is someone ready to pray open your mouth and begin to lose everything that has been sent to you by prophecy lose that next season of your spiritual life lose that next season of your destiny lose the finances allocated for you and if they ask you why tell them it's because i'm in a season where the master had need of my efficiency the master has need of my spirituality the master has need of my resourcefulness the master has need of my influence the king has made a demand and I must respond. Therefore, gates of poverty be shut. The king has made a call upon my spiritual life. Therefore, gates of backsliding be shut. The king has made a demand on my efficiency in ministry. Therefore, gates of stagnation be shut. Someone is praying. And if they ask you tell them the master had need of it the master has need of my finances in this season the master has need of my prayer stamina in this season the master had need of the spirit of revelation that is upon me the master has need there is a triumphant entry 
that must happen through my life must happen through my destiny the master has need of the code therefore lose that code lose that code the code that no man had written on In the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus listen before I speak over your life let me encourage you whatever it takes tonight please invite your family members whatever sacrifice it will take for what God is going to be doing over your destiny tonight already for some of you you have an assignment by God this morning's teaching, I'm emphasizing again. As you are standing here, the Holy Ghost is already speaking to you about the person who needs to hear this. Rather than discussing and trying to give counseling, just tell him this is it. Just sit down and listen your way out of this realm and out of this phase. Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. But one thing is needful. And this Mary has chosen to sit please whatever sacrifice you will make tonight I truly believe by the spirit tonight that with the word of God that will come I've not had the time sadly to pray for the sick and just minister because we have to respect time and I'm happy that we took some time to pray this morning but I want you to come tonight with your heart enlarged and opened one of the things I believe that God is going to do in our lives is to supply the oil and the grace for the next level look let me tell you sincerely 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 you can be anointed but limited the same way you have money but how much in the in in economic realms in in, in the realm of economy it's not just that you have money how much of it do you have if you have one million you will never be hungry but you will never be comfortable too is that true 10 million can buy a car but it most likely may not be able to build a comfortable house so don't just say i have money how much you must have to the degree that it takes to build that which brings glory to the name of the lord there are many of us this conference is a retreat you have come especially for those who are consistently giving pouring into others god is creating a platform right now an oasis and he's saying you need to come and receive and be strengthened in your inner man in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ now let me pray for you i want you to pray over one request i'm releasing my faith with you what one thing are you trusting god for that you know if this is done it will be an accelerator to your christian experience please pray let's release our faith and ask the lord to pray in prayer that he should step in talk to the Lord believe what you are saying what one thing many things are important but in order of priority there is always that one thing for some of you is healing you need the convenience in your health you are tired of this devourer that is eating up your body and eating up your finances rather than Satan attacking your finances he attacked your health because with it you will kill two birds with one stone for some of you it's your joy and your peace for some of you it's your spouse and your marriage and your children the peace that will allow you serve God acceptably it's not been there for some of you it's the work of your hand you are praying and say Lord prosper bring increase it doesn't matter what it is pray here at Reha IC 2022 we're praying and declaring to the God who answers prayers go ahead and pray pray one more minute pray while I sing out our song again from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same your name is to be hallowed 
From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed. Hallelujah. Let me speak over your life. One of the principles of revival and reawakening is the power of the prophetic. When Jesus went to the tomb of Lazarus, let me not go ahead of myself. We'll leave that for tonight. But when he stood at the tomb of Lazarus, Lazarus would have remained there forever. But he stood there and he said, roll the stone away. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.